The launch of the Community Crime and Violence Prevention Component is the first activity of this component since the Inter-American Development Bank gave its approval to initiate activities under Component 1 of the Citizen Security Strengthening Program. The approval of the IDB followed the identification of the 20 communities, which was based on a two-stage methodology. In the first stage, crime data the community level for murder for the years 2010, 2011, and 2013, and domestic violence, robberies, breaking and entering, and larceny for the years 2011 to 2013 were used to identify 25 communities with the highest crime rates in Guyana. The shortlisted communities were then ranked in terms of suitability for intervention based on a range of additional criteria, including the percent of youths and young adults, the percent of persons who have primary or lower education, the, the percent of persons who have no formal qualifications, the percent of unemployed persons, the population size within each community, and the ethnic composition of each community. The final 20 communities that were selected are Braden Hoop in Region 3, All Boystown, Charlestown, Sophia, South Romville, Alberton, Kingston, Le Penitence, McDoom, Providence, Annandale, Buxton Friendship, and Enmore in Region 4, Rosignol in Region 5, Friendship, Albion, Port Morant, Adelphi, and Angois Avenue in Region 6, and Wisma in Region 10. Take this opportunity to applaud your presence and express my gratitude to all of you. This to me is an indication that you are concerned about your communities and you are committed in supporting government's effort in increasing the levels of safety and security therein. The launch of this component and your participation herein is an indication that the Ministry of Public Security and the government understand that we must foster cooperation and partnerships with communities to address the problems related to public security in an effort to safeguard the well-being of all Guyanese. I am impressed with this CSSP component. It will have a far more wide-ranging impact than just crime and violence reduction. It will have an impact in realizing a potential in ordinary citizens of Ghana of wanting to do things to bring solutions to our problems. So this component of the Citizen Security Strengthening Program is a grassroots attempt designed to address these kinds of crime and violence at the community level by reducing the contributing factors while at the same time strengthening the protective factors. The government is aware that there is a direct relation between illiteracy and unemployment, and then unemployment and crime. This component will provide technical and vocational skills training, and so it will help in that emphasis in education. And it will provide that training to approximately 4,000 at-risk youths during the course of the next four years. We will be spending some three million US dollars on providing technical and vocational education and training to cover all costs associated with uh, re-enrolling youths in employable skills training and entrepreneurship training. Without some form of education, our young people will not be able to find jobs to create or to create their own jobs, even when there is an enabling environment for entrepreneurs. And of course, that three million US dollars is coming out of that program of a 15 million US dollars loan, equivalent to three billion Guyana dollars from the Inter-American Development Bank. This Community Crime and Violence Prevention Component, they call it Component 1, accounts for some 5.7 million US dollars of that 50 million and involves promoting, as I have noted here, effective community-based 
prevention. And what this will do, I noticed Ross mentioned it earlier, capacity building for community level governance and community based organizations. And he mentioned the 20 or so communities that we are going to emphasize. These communities will form action councils and to reestablish and resuscitate defunct councils where they existed before. And these are going to come up with safety plans that will be the basis then for the interventions to be made. Also, provision for training for community members in better parenting, but also not only for better parenting, but for reducing gender-based and domestic violence. Training in conflict resolution, among others. And of course, bringing public awareness and behavioral change campaigns to the communities. It has to do with a lot of that, public awareness. And then of course, the implementation of rapid impact projects, such as the rehabilitation of multi-purpose centers, sports infrastructure, uh, the lighting, the arrangements for seating and so on, wherever we can have, let's say, uh, basketball courts to be placed and so on. These are envisioned within that concept that we want to have safe spaces for our young people and the wider community for the interaction of our citizenry. These interventions will complement existing crime and violence prevention and reduction programs. Community action officers will visit communities to organize residents into groups to find solutions to delinquency, truancy, antisocial behavior, child abuse and neglect, domestic violence and so on. And these officers will also identify those at risk youths and provide them with positive alternatives so as to change their negative behavior towards society and to stop this cycle of spiraling violence and crime. Our cabinet have all agreed, our cabinet members have all agreed that addressing issues faced by adolescents and youths require everyone's support. To successfully transform the security landscape in our country, implementation of this project requires an important element, national ownership. While the IDB is providing the resources, both financial and technical, Successful crime prevention and intervention requires local ownership. This component then is a part of a larger program, which is a national undertaking. And your presence here today increases my expectation that you will see this program as your program. We're very happy to see this movement and to see activities started. And uh, this is one of the important activities, all activities are important, but this is one of the key components of the projects uh, that has most visibility. And that is, uh, so we pay attention to everything, but there's certain things, of course, we like to see happening. So thank you very much. Uh, community participation, and uh, we've talk, we heard about a lot about community participation, and of course that's the core uh, of this uh, component. I mean, why? Because. It is in crime and violence prevention. It's one of the key, way, essential ways for any citizen program that wants to involve its citizens and communities. That is the best way to go about it. And this is from our experience in other countries and a wide range of international research. Uh, it has proven that a strategy that combines both crime prevention and crime control activities have a better chance of succeeding, are superior in a means to reduce crime and violence. Therefore, improving community relations, cohesion, and well-being will contribute to the reduction of violence. Social prevention activities at the community and individual level, envisioned as envisioned in this program, will contribute to, to address some of the key causes of crime and violence, and at the same time, because there are other components, contribute also to institutional strengthening interventions with support of the criminal, criminal justice system. The prevention of crime, therefore, is everybody's business. 
To effectively reduce crime and violence, all must be involved in our communities if we are to be safe. The government recognizes this, and as a result, a number of training programs have been conducted in various parts of the country, targeting youth. The government realizes that when youth are empowered, they will be in possession of the tools that will help them to develop themselves, resulting in the economic growth of their communities. And so it's my pride and my joy to say that, imagine if I grew up and I'm, I'm not necessarily noting all of the programs of this nation that might have impacted me as a youngster um, growing up, but I don't know of any. And imagine if a little boy who went to South Rumble Park Primary School and grew up on the shopping plaza could grow up to become Deputy Mayor of Georgetown, minus some programs like these. Imagine what could happen to the young people who will be impacted by such a program such as this, what their lives will be 25, 30 years from now if the program is allowed to go forward and be executed in the manner that is envisioned by all the persons who are administrating it. I expect at least the youths would be gainfully employed and um, we should have more facilities to get them out of trouble. So what we find, even though, even if there, are, there is employment, some of the children, the youth cannot participate because they are not qualified. They are not educated. Some of them don't even know the basic. So I feel that we should go back to the stage of remedial teaching for some of the youths in the Rosic North constituency. Of course, this program is going to help the young people. To, one, to get them uh, properly trained and then eventually get them a job. And, they, in, and most likely the jobs that I see that they will get would be um, in terms of self-employment. Self Right, because with the entrepreneurial component that is in, embodied into the program, quite a lot of young people are going to pinch out into their own little business and start their own um, um, career. I see this program helping the residents of Lepenton very good. Because, for instance, we have a lot of teenagers' pregnancy in that area. We have a lot of teenagers drop out. And with this program, with this program it will benefit the teenagers a great lot.